Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to today's webinar, What's New in 13.2 for Windows Developers, presented by DevExpress Technical Evangelist, Paul Usher. In this session, watch Paul demonstrate the newest products and features for our WinForms, WPF, and Windows 8 XAML toolset including enhancements to our grid controls across all three platforms, a spreadsheet and PDF viewer for WPF, and much more. Thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Paul Usher. Thanks, Amanda. 1% from APAC, and it's 4 o'clock in the morning, so uh, welcome. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first What's New in 13.2 presentation. My name's Paul Usher, and I'm a technical evangelist here at DevExpress. And I love launch time. The excitement around the office is so electrifying, with the teams polishing off the final parts to what's going to be an amazing release this week. Now, today I'm going to focus on WinForms, WPF, and Windows 8 XAML. And then every day this week, one of my colleagues will show you a different technology. And as I said, there's going to be something in it for everybody. Now, normally at this stage, I take you through a few slides explaining different things, but not today. Instead, I'm going to start off with the first thing that's changed, and that is the demo center. Now, whether you're a seasoned user or new to our controls, the demo center is a great place to get up to speed with some of the features and functionality that we offer. You can launch complete applications or dive into the technical demos and start looking at individual and specific controls. We'll start with WinForms, and the first cab off the rank is going to be probably one of the most versatile and flexible controls that we have, and certainly I think one of the widest used, and that's the data grid. So when you've got something that is a flagship product and used in so many different things, what additional functionality can we add to it? Well, we'll start by looking at inline editing. Now this is a feature that made it from our web forms or ASP.NET control. And quite simply, what it allows you to do is double click on a row or press F2 and the edit panel will appear. The idea here is that you can offer the, the simple editing functionality with other controls in a suite. So here we've got the pick the image control. And from here, we could select to you know, change the image, load the image, save, save the picture out. We've got the drop-down editors, everything that you'd expect, but I haven't left the comfort of the actual grid. Now, there's a couple of options that we can also do here. You can see that as I change some data and then update, it's going to update in real time in the grid. As well as being able to see the row that I'm editing, I can actually hide the current row when I move into edit mode. So if we collapse that and click on the Murano, now the row that I'm actually editing is hidden from view. So it gives you a couple of different ways to visualize that edit mode. And there's one other option available, and that is to actually call an edit form. So now when I go to edit a line, the actual form is going to pop out, and you can see as I drag that around the screen, it becomes a, a, a modal dialog that allows me to make the changes and then commit those back into the grid. At this point, we've not written any code. The customization and editing is based on properties inside the grid. But as you've come to expect, we've delivered even more. If I switch over to the advanced edit form, we've got the same data, just visualized slightly differently. Here we're grouping by body style. Now when I double click to edit, you'll see that the layout is custom. I've put some extra emphasis on the image, so the image is larger, and the other information is grouped nicely into these tabs. So you get to control exactly how you, your users will visualize or edit that data already in the grid. Now, the amount of time saving in having to bring up extra forms or the functionality is just really outstanding. The next feature that made it into the grid is the web style row selection. What we're seeing here is an example of maybe some web orders that have come in. We're grouping by order number and we have product. And as I come and click on each line, you'll see that the grid itself gets selected. Now I can select based on the entire header, or if I wanted to, I could select the entire grid, nice and simple. 
one of the useful features here would be maybe selecting a couple of orders that need to go out onto the warehouse floor to be picked, telling the system I want to print selected rows only, and then hitting print preview, and I get just those items pushed out to my, uh, my preview window. So another great feature that's been inspired by what's happening in the web world. Now the grid's always been powerful for visualizing data. And the teams came up with um, an inspired option based on the file explorer that you'd find inside Windows. So as I switch over to the Win Explorer view, what we're looking at here is a, a demo that was actually inspired by that exact thing, a file browser. I'm going to drill down into a couple of folders and you'll see as I do that, the actual file structure underneath is rendered nicely inside my grid view. Now by moving over to the view tab here, I can then change the view watch, uh, and what's shown to the user. So I've got extra large, I can show some large or medium icons and these things are rendered really nicely, really rich. I can go to small icons. I could turn on the item checkboxes to allow me to select and interact with the content of the grid. I've got list, tiles, and even a content view allowing me to see more information and present that nicely to the user. That's a custom implementation, so we'd expect to be able to do something just as nice if binding straight to a database. So we'll switch over to the cars example again. And here we've got the car information. You can see that I can collapse these panels, allowing the user to get to as much information as, as we want to expose. I can change the grouping. And even uh, implement some custom sorting. And again, as I move through these different views, we get a really nice experience delivered to the, to the client. We've got the extra large icons, the large icons. Implementing this sort of feature allows you to do so much more inside your application um, to be able to present and give your users so many different options for how they get to visualize their data. If I switch to the content view, here I've got you know, some nice presentation, some description about the data that I'm wanting to show on screen. Now while we're inside this view, we'll just show you a couple of the new themes that's made it through to 13.2. Of course, we ship all the standard skins that you've come to love. And here I can choose the new Visual Studio 2013 blue theme. We then also have that as a dark theme. And then finally, the 2013 light theme. So, moving from the grid, we'll uh, take a look at what else is new. When we released 13.2 earlier this year, along came uh, another flagship product, which was the spreadsheet. The take up from our users and the feedback has been overwhelming. It's just been absolutely fantastic. And it's because of that feedback that we get to keep delivering new features and things that you guys ask for. And that's what the support center is all about. Not just to get your questions answered, but to hear feedback from you, the developers and the users um, that have helped certainly the last 15 years of our business get to where it is. Now the first thing you're going to see with the break-even analysis is charts. You've asked for it, it's now embedded in 13.2. We're using a native chart engine which means that we're able to deliver charts that are compatible with Excel and look and feel as close to Excel as humanly possible. How easy is it to actually implement a chart? Well. I'm going to open some sample data from my desktop. Waiting for go to webinar to render my screen. And here I've got a little bit of data. Nothing special, just a few cells. All I would need to do is highlight a range. Come along to the insert tab and choose the chart type I want and bang. I'm going to do that again with another chart, highlight a range, add a line chart, and there it is. Just to show you how cool this feature is, I'm going to save this chart, show you save as, 
and we'll call this webinar. We're doing it in real time, and that's going to go out to my desktop. You can see the icon appear here, and I'm double, I'll double click and open that inside Excel. There's the chart inside Excel. It's a completely compatible and such a cool new feature. And along with charts, we've got the ability to insert images, um, shapes. You can bring in a, a whole swag of different options now. The other thing to make it for spreadsheeting is the conditional formatting. If I bring up the Home tab, we've got the conditional format option here. And very quickly, you can add some really nice visualization to your data. On the top trading patterns, we've got the um, color scales, we've got the data bars, we've got icon sets, and you can stack conditional formats on top of each other. Next in line is the database merging. Now remember here we're working inside the spreadsheet control. So what we have inside a mail merge design view is a header record, a detail record, and a footer. You can see inside the cells that we're referencing a field as a formula with its product uh, with the field name for each of these, so supplier. And then when I click on show results, we get this beautifully rendered output. This means that you get to customize presentations, um, letters, catalogs, anything that you want to merge data into. There's even an option to allow you to merge images. So here we've got the employee list, again the header, detail and footer. And when I say show results, we can see that the images have been bound in there nicely as well. Let's take that one step further and take a look at the, detail, at the master detailed version. So this time we've got our supplier record, which becomes our master record. And then we've got the product details, which is a detail level record. So we've got the supplier as the master, the product name, and then the order details. So effectively, three different tables that have been combined into this report. This time when we click on show results, we're going to see multiple tabs created. And each tab represents a new supplier. And as I scroll through this data here, we can see that the products come up with all the order information. So very, very powerful and versatile functionality delivered inside the spreadsheet control. You can even do cool things like look at the weather around the state. Here we're using some images, some conditional formatting. You can see the data bars inside the uh, precip precipitation column, etc. Now the spreadsheet itself is a very powerful API engine behind it. So whether it's data importing, you're working with XLS, XLSX files, um, CSVs, text files, very, very cool and powerful stuff. Okay, looking at what's next in 13.2, and we'll take a look at mapping. Again, something that was introduced into 13.1 for WinForms. The feedback as far as things that you, you wanted to be able to do. The teams have been listening to everything that comes through and making these cool decisions. Three important aspects to maps for this release. The first is that we've got geocode, searching, and routing, all provided by the Bing services. I understand that in this size presentation, the, the rendering is not going to be super fast, so I'm not going to be zooming in and out. But there is some nice new animation, some zooming. We've added theming and printing to the map control. But here you can see on screen I have a search panel. And if I type in 505 North Brandt, which of course is our office address in Glendale, what will happen is the map controller is going out to the Bing service and looking for that address and will then put a push pin at the location of the office. It centers the map and allows me to make that the, the first point of, uh, of my journey. Now, the other thing I can do is I can come along and mark specific points on my map. And as I do that, we're going to see the Bing route service take effect. Here I'm simply going through and plotting my next trip. 
and you can see on screen that route has been calculated really, really nicely. You've got the control over uh, the, the style of the pens, the uh, a whole host of extra things. But remember the you know things like the geocoding. Put an address in and find the uh, the geolocation information straight from it now. It certainly is a cool feature. Next, we've got another new item, which is the dashboard widgets. Now, dashboard widgets. When you hear the word dashboard, you automatically think about uh, maybe charts and graphs and things like that. But dashboard widgets is an entire document management system. You can see on screen I've got these really nice little panels that I can drag around. I can resize them. I can uh, close them if I wanted to or double click. So if I double click the calendar, I get a nice full screen rich experience. And because they're individual documents, you get to control all of the content and how you want it to interact and display with the, the user. If we take a look at another option there, here's a simple stock price um, real-time update where the information has been pushed in and rendered straight to the user's screen, allowing them to see what's going on. They might want to reorder certain stocks based on visual priority, etc. So at this point, the only limitation really is your concepts of what you want to deliver to your customers. It's some really, really nice functionality happening. Probably one of my favorite is the taskbar assistant. Now we've all worked inside Windows 7, Windows 8, where when we put the mouse over a task panel, we get a preview. We've also seen some applications that have provided some really nice functionality in this. So the first thing we'll do is add a thumbnail button. Now when I hover over here, we can see straight away that I've got this thumbnail happening. So let's add another couple and bring that up, hover. I have now got two thumbnail buttons. If the user taps on the thumbnail, you receive an event notification saying this has now happened and you can respond to it. You can also programmatically remove the thumbnail buttons. The other thing you can do is add an overlay image onto the taskbar. So here we're seeing the little green apply. I've changed that to an add button. It's important when your user is in your application or maybe you're doing some background processing that you want to provide this additional feedback to what's actually happening. Again, thinking about maybe a large copying operation, whether it be File Explorer or some other thing, and you want to provide that visual feedback. You don't want to block the UI thread or you don't want to have a, a big progress bar panel sitting in the middle of the screen. So instead, you can add a progress indicator to the taskbar itself. Now, if you're not sure of how long the actual process is going to take, you can choose this indeterminate option. And you'll see at the top of the screen now, cycling through in green, telling the user that this application is busy doing something for them. If you do know how long it's going to take, then you can implement a normal progress indicator, controlling the actual percentage complete. You'll see as I drag this across to the right, that we get the progress like so. It may be that you want to bring their attention to an error. So you can switch that to a red. Again, change at whatever percentage they were at. Or maybe that the system is waiting for some response, so it's in a pause state. Providing a really rich experience for them without having to switch back to application or if they're in the middle of doing something else. Now the other thing we can do is interact with the context menu on the taskbar. So we click Add Item to Task Category. Now when I right click, we'll see that I've got this task option here. If I want to, I could also implement custom categories in the same thing. This is really, really useful if you're wanting to implement most recently used lists or AMIUs or other things that otherwise would be very difficult to implement playing around with APIs or other calls. You can also see that I can implement the push pin so that that item will stay on that custom category all the time. Sometimes it's, it's those seemingly smaller things that allow us to deliver so much more to the end user. 
The next thing that made uh, the most notable list is the flyout panel. Um, you might think of this as a, a data drawer or other words in, in different operating systems, but flyout panel, it can be positioned anywhere on your canvas or your screen. And here I'm going to just leave it at the, the top. So when I say show tool window, we get this nice panel up here that exposes some data. It might be that you want to deliver that little bit of extra information or a set of commands or tools, but you don't want to clutter your interface. And it's a great option for doing that. If I change this to anchor at the bottom and say show, you'll see it appears now down this bottom left hand side. I've got other options such as close when clicking outside. So now, if I say show, if the user clicks anywhere outside that uh, flyout panel, click and it's going to disappear. And then you've got the option of being able to bring in a slide or actually fade in the panel as you require. Next, we'll take a look at the gauge. Now, it's interesting when you sort of look at the, the support center and the, some of the things that actually come through and the requests. This is certainly something that's been asked for on many, many occasions. And it's the logarithmic scale gauge. Now, when I started looking into this, I asked Amanda what a, algorithm, what a logarithmic scale was. And she gave me this explanation to read to everybody. It's a scale where actual distances from origin are proportional to the logarithmic or corresponding scale number, coming from the Greek logos, which is ratio, and arithmos meaning number. So now we've all learned something. What we've got here is the ability to choose one of the pre-built logarithmic bases. So we've got binary, decimal, exponential, and custom. I'll leave it on binary. And you can see I can apply the value as you would normally. What we can also do is change the min-max value and bring that into another range. And again, just swing that gauge, set the value to whatever I want. As I said, there's been a, such an interesting number of requests for a gauge that supported lo logarithmic scales. While we're looking at visualization things, let's switch over to the charting and take a look at, at what's new in the charts. Now, the number one thing that um, I find interesting when I talk to people and they start looking at large volumes of data on charts. Um, we have one client that I, I spoke to for quite some time who does medical charting. So, you know, blood pressure, heart rate, systolic, etc., etc. And he was saying how easy it is to use some of the, uh, you know, the large volumes of data inside our chart controls. What we now have implemented is this data aggregation option. What we're seeing on screen is a chart with over half a million points. It's rendered really nicely, and looking at it, you'd think there aren't that many points visible. And that's because the data is being aggregated and displayed. If I come over, move my mouse, we'll see exactly the the aggregate values. But if I now start zooming in, and I'm just going to do it one click at a time so that it renders nicely out there for everybody, but you can see along the bottom of the, um, the on the horizontal axis, the data values are changing as the as we drill in and start looking at the actual data points. If I move a little bit quicker, you can see I can get right down to the individual values, which makes a big difference. Zoom out again, and we can see the aggregation taking place and the charts displayed. Now, the same thing has been applied if we take a look at, say, a date time version of this. Here we've got data from 1876 all the way to 2011. Again, I start zooming in, and we'll see that the date range is now going from decades to years. And as I scroll in a little faster, we get all the way into months, and in fact, you know, specific months in an individual um, calendar period. So it's really, really powerful and fast options for your, your grids. 
The favorite one I like is this currency exchange rate. So showing currency fluctuations across a large period. You can see the, the points moving in tandem. Down here I can use the range selector to drag the data backwards and forwards. I can expand my range. So here we've got the aggregation happening. Or if I'm on the chart, I can zoom in and get down to even a day level and look at the currency fluctuations on a day by day basis. Another really cool feature introduced to the charts is the checkbox legend item. Now what we're seeing on the right hand side is a standard legend but with checkboxes which means that the user can interact and turn on features or turn off features that they don't want to see on the chart. So I can turn off my dairy products completely and let's turn on the beverage range. Now the really cool thing here is that you get to control which elements are selectable, which ones can be turned off, which ones can be clicked and what happens with the range. So for example beverages, I turn on the trend line. If I take the tick off beverages, the trend line is not even available. So it's a really, really cool set of features there, being able to add that f uh, flexibility and functionality to the charts for your end users. Now there's lots of little um, improvements or additions throughout the whole suite of WinForms. I've just singled out some specific things um, inside WinForms itself that I wanted to show. Now what I want to do is spend a couple of minutes and see what's new for our WPFians. And again, that's a word that Amanda gave me. First and foremost, and you've been asking for it since we released it in WinForms in 13.2, has got to be the spreadsheet control. Now, it's built on the same spreadsheet API and, and engine that, 13, that the uh, WinForms control was built on. But we're really pleased to announce that as of this week, when 13.2 gets launched, you've got a complete spreadsheet control for WPF. Instead of going through this demonstration on screen, I wanted to take a look at what was actually involved in building a complete Excel replacement or Excel inspired replacement using our WPF control. I actually wrote a blog post about this yesterday. I thought it'd be a good thing just to show how or how simple it is to do that. So here we've got a straight, uh, a blank WPF application inside Visual Studio 2013. On my toolbox, I'm going to search for spreadsheet, drag the spreadsheet control onto the canvas. I'll choose reset all to position it. And you'll notice on the context menu, I can come down and say create ribbon items. I'm going to say I want everything. So after a second, we're going to see the uh, the window itself. There it goes, and all my ribbons, all the tabs are all set up, and simply press run. I'll move Visual Studio out of the way, and there we have it: a complete spreadsheet control built inside WPF that's capable of reading, writing XLS files. Here's the webinar sample I wrote earlier. It's straight out of the box. You've got the ability to do your printing, you've got your, your previews, you can set your page sizes, you've got access to all the fonts, the cell merging, you've got the conditional formatting that I showed you inside WinForms earlier. The spreadsheet control has over 300 inbuilt formula with the ability for you to actually extend that yourself and write custom methods. And one thing that I didn't show you in the WinForms version, which is there, is the ability to turn these um, formulas so that they're visible inside the cell, which I think when you're developing particularly complex spreadsheets is a really, really nice feature to have. So you can show or hide your formulas. I've got access to all the inbuilt functionality here. Supporting over a million rows and it, it just is a, a real nice piece of, uh, of gear. You can ship this out uh, so that your end users have got a spreadsheet control without the need to have Microsoft Office installed. You can read and write the Excel spreadsheets, text files, CSV files, 
Um, you've got the option of doing your, your panel freezing. It is a real cool tool to play with. And as you saw, in no code and a few mouse clicks, I have got a basic application that I can ship out. Move Visual Studio again. So what else then is new for WPF? Well, along with the spreadsheet control, we've also delivered the PDF viewer. And some of these features that I'm going through apply across the WinForms and the WPF range. So I launch the viewer. Embed PDF files or the ability to view files in any of your WPF applications. It comes complete with the toolbar and the ability to do text searching. So if I look here, I want to find a pavlova, which is probably one of my favorite desserts, and it will find it. The same inside the settings, I've got the ability to look for whole words or make my search case sensitive. And I can cycle through that search option. So now there's no more entries to find. The scrolling is beautiful and smooth. I've got the ability to print the PDF. There is a, a document that I've been playing with this week, which was some 23 megs or 150 page publication. This thing renders it inside a second. It is blistering fast and again, really nice to, to have that PDF functionality inside an application without having Adobe and without the need for any other third party tools. You can start embedding PDFs and document functionality. The other thing you can do is right click and show document properties and you've got access to all the metadata for the document as well. And in 13.2, uh, we've now got full support for password protected documents so that you can open those and get prompted, etc. Moving along, let's take a look now at the data grid and what's been enhanced in the, uh, in the data grid for WPF. I think the, the first thing to look at here would be fixed bands. We can now fix left or right edge bands. Here we've got some employee information. As I scroll across, you'll see that the total on the right hand side stays in its fixed place. We've also added the ability to export some new serialization options. And if I come back and run spark lines, you can now see or add spark lines into your grid control, which is really, really nice. Spark lines are starting to take off, I think, in a lot of visualization. It's a great way to show trend lines and highs and lows without people having to read tabular data. And now it's really as simple as adding a cell in your grid and nominating it as a spark line uh, object and setting the properties to it. There's been a, a couple of changes to the themes inside for WPF. Uh, we've now got the Office 2013 dark and light gray options. Uh, and of course, still got the rich selection of other themes that's been available since 13.2, uh, 13.1. Now we saw the flyout control for WinForms. Um, it's also been added to the WPF range of tools as well. So if I come along and choose having trouble with my mouse right now data editors and scroll across now to flyout control. So being able to produce that same additional information using a flyer panel. You can see here we've laid it out slightly differently, but here we can bring the panel from the top. We can bring it in from the left or right. We can make it appear in top left, top right, pretty much any position you want. And you get that rich WPF rendered animated um, approach to be able to bring that information out to the user any way that you want. Make it center. Something else that was added to try and bring the, well not try and bring, but to, to bring the range into uh, um, consistency. So if you're working in one particular technology and you want to switch to another, you've got that same set of tools available in your toolbox. 
There were some changes to the map control. We've added some virtualization via the web service for speed. Um, and then things like the uh, trillis control, where cell selection has been made so you can select individual or multiple cells inside a tree list. And then one of the other things that made it onto my um, hit list is inside the property grid, where we've added a whole heap of extra ways that you can um, get to the data or visualize the data with annotations. So what I do recommend there is run the demo center and just play around with, there's so much changing um, and new features being added there in the background for you. Now conscious of the time as always, let's take a quick look at some of the changes to Windows 8 XAML or uh, the XAMLonians. Here I'm going to run the future demo. Now in 13.2 the future demo actually will just run. There's no need to open it inside Visual Studio. You can get straight into here. And there's been some changes. Let's take a look first at the in-place editing. So here we might be looking at this on a touch device or um, you know, the, the use of touch enable laptops is becoming more and more prolific. As I click on each one of these um, cells, you'll see that I've got the ability to edit. I can quickly clear. If I look at my date control and pop that up, I've got this really nice ability to choose my date features. I've got drop down combos. The progress bar, I can just touch and drag. And things like the drop down for uh, options like so. So there's been a number of improvements inside the in place editing. We've seen it through the WinForms, we've seen it in WPF, and we're really happy to announce that the PDF viewer is now also available in Windows 8 XAML range. Now this uses the same rendering engine that Microsoft supply inside um, uh, Windows 8 or 8.1. You can use touch scrolling. So if you're looking at this on a tablet, you can just use your finger and, and do a nice swipe. If you touch or tap the uh, the window, you get the drop-down control. You can switch to a continuous view. So instead, you can just scroll up and down through the pages. You can choose the PDF to fit the width, fit the height. You can bookmark pages. You can obviously print and select the different document to open. We've also added some demonstrations for um, looking at embedded reporting. So all the Windows 8 things are just optimized really nicely for touch. You can get in and out of the, the controls using your finger. Obviously, I'm using a mouse here um, for, for, for simplicity. The data grid, um, we've now got the ability to filter data straight from the grid to drag rows, uh, to drag columns around and um, apply filters in, in real time. There's, there's just so much happening uh, that's available for you guys when you're developing for these platforms. Amanda, how are we going for questions? I'm uh, about to have a coughing fit, I think, here. <laughs> hey, Paul, uh, we've had a, t I mean, a ton of questions that have been answered by um, the WinForms and WPF team on the back end and also Seth Juarez. <laughs> um, but there are a couple that I uh, want to ask you when you're uh, done with your live presentation. No problem at all. Well, uh, what, what I'd like to do is um, just first of all let everybody or remind everybody to start looking at all the really cool functionality. This new demo center is got to be the place to start. Uh, again, the teams have done such an amazing job to expose so much, um, what's the word I'm looking for, functionality and flexibility in all the controls. So what? let's throw some questions at me. Uh, from Jim, do we need a Bing API license key to use the map? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
uh, and from Paul Davey, can we place custom objects at address points on the maps? You can place custom pins. Um, so yes, no hesitation. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's a couple that haven't been answered yet. Is the flyout control available? The flyout control is not available in 13.1, correct? It's only coming out in 13.2 from Sherry. Correct. And then, obviously, people are asking, when is uh, the 13.2 release? And it is this week, <laughs> everybody. It is definitely this week, and um, it's going to be a huge week. Certainly, a, a, lot of, a lot of customers have had access to the, um, the, the beta or beta version for the last few weeks. And the, again, the feedback on that's been fantastic. But it's going to be released and ready to rock and roll this week. Uh, let's see, from Dennis, you mentioned password support for the PDF viewer. Could you add similar functionality or would you add similar functionality to the spreadsheet? That's a very good question. Um, Mr. Juarez, are you able to throw some answers to that one? <laughs> um, I know that you might not be able to hear, uh, hear Seth's answer, but if he can type a, a response, we'll get that answered as well. Um, the, certainly, the, the spreadsheet control has got the option of opening XLS, XLSX files, Excel template files. Um, it, it will open um, Excel spreadsheets with um, with macro code or script code, even though that's not actually supported. Um, and the API behind that is just there's over 140 events that you can interact with uh, in the the spreadsheet API. So the yeah, it's mind blowing. All right, from Dave, does 13.2 still work with Visual Studio 12? It still works with Visual Studio 2012, absolutely. Uh, can the P WPF PDF viewer be used for signing PDF documents? Not at this stage. Stay tuned, but it's not something that is available in 13.2. It is a viewer. It allows you to, to open uh, documents. We've added support for a number of embedded fonts, um, images, and um, it, it's, it's one of those products that obviously it was released in a, a beta stage in 13.1. We're now happy to announce that it's no longer um, beta. And as time progresses, we'll simply be adding more and more functionality. I can feel the, the pressure now of the WPF team saying, Paul, stop talking. But um, certainly, <laughs> and it, one of the things that you know, maybe developers uh, sometimes miss, I think, uh, when you look at so delivering something like a PDF viewer, there are thousands upon thousands of pages of standards that we have to adhere to. So we've got to read and understand just to be writing our code to deliver this functionality so that uh, customers can drag something on the form and go, hey, look, it works. So you know, it, some of this stuff it, we can demo in seconds, but the amount of work that goes in behind it is just testament to the to the strength, I think, and the I suppose the smarts of the, the, the guys here at DevExpress. It's it's unbelievable. And I'm always amazed that for you know third party controls, it would take well I, I certainly wouldn't undertake trying to write a PDF for myself, let alone the grids and all the other things. It's just Amazing. All right, we'll take a couple more questions. Let's see. Uh, will it be possible to copy uh, text slash images from the PDF viewer programmatically? Not at this stage. All right. Will you support custom calcs? You custom calculations are already in place. You can create your own custom functions, and there's some. Um, if I just switch over to WPF for a second and bring up the spreadsheet control, we've got the custom function here and you can see one that was added in where you type in some numbers and a custom function is used there to actually um, turn the number into words. So all the function, all the formulas, etc. that are in the library now are compatible with Excel and you can extend it. 
the API set that allows you to do even more and interact with that is really easy to get to grips with. And again, the demo center has a really cool example of that. Uh, from Matt, will you support, uh, will there be support for annotations for the PDF viewer? Watch this space. Not in 13.2, but as I was saying before, there's certainly, um, it, it's a product that is moving into its own right now. So what would be, what would be really good feedback from anybody using the, the controls is adding those suggestions in. So it's like, hey, we want to do this or um, really need to be able to do that. The, the support center guys love to hear your suggestions and how you're actually using the tools in real world scenarios. Okay, let's see. Do you support macros in the spreadsheet control from Wayne? Not at this stage. But remember, the fact that the, you've got access to the API and you're building it inside your application, the question would be, what do you want to use macros for? Is it, if it's not an end user requirement, you can do a lot more than macros would offer in the spreadsheet with the API. Okay, let's see. Uh, from Paul, the spreadsheet control is nice, but are you looking to support your controls in proper Office extensions? For example, I create a ribbon control add-in for Excel, but would like to use your controls on it. My suggestion there, Paul, since it's such a cool name, is <laughs> send, me a, uh, send me or the support team a quick email uh, so I can go into a little bit more depth on exactly what you're trying to achieve and see where I can help you with that. Cool. Paul, I just sent, Paul Davey, I just sent you Paul Usher's <laughs> email. <laughs> Let's see from Robert. Can you use a pivot table with the spreadsheet function? Mr. Juarez. Ah, it's a question for Seth, is it? <laughs> Delegated. All right. Um, uh, from Jeremiah, which versions of .NET are supported by 13.2? 4 and 4.4, or 4 upwards um, is my, my response. Just, just on that question that came up before regarding the, um, the, the spreadsheet, I do know that Seth has got a couple of webinars pr um, scheduled this week. I mean, it's, it's just a huge week for information for our users, but um, one of those webinars is on data and analytics. So um, certainly I would be saying, let's see if we can get an answer ready for that one. Yeah, uh, actually the data and our analytics and dashboards webinar is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I Shameless think he's plan. answered a lot of questions uh, saying, Joy uh, come back, come back tomorrow. <laughs> uh, let's see, is this function numbers to text available on its own without the spreadsheet? Um, short answer is yes. I mean, it's, it's part of the demo, the source code we ship with the demo. So uh, you, could, um, you could certainly um, pull it out of there. Okay. It is a fun one to write though, if anybody is feeling up to a challenge. Hmm. Um, is the design of the inline editing form in a WPF grid able to be dynamically changed based on a selected row? That's a good question. I'd have to certainly, uh, I'd, I'd have to try and, and do it before I said yes. Uh, I'm not going to say no straight away, but um, uh, yeah, good, qu <laughs> good question. Question number one I can't answer. I can't delegate <laughs> either. I believe, it looks like our support guys are saying yes, of course. There you go. Yes, of course. Uh, does the PDF viewer support form fields? It doesn't support form fields in as far as you can't edit forms. Um, it's a, it basically will read the, um, the, the PDF file as a view file. Um, we, keep, we have actually a, several of the, this question. Uh, what about Google supporting Google in the map control in the future? Okay. 
one of the <laughs> one of the concerns or one of the straight out issues with uh, with Google's APIs is the cost. Um, you know, we've got support for OpenStreetMaps and we've got support for Bing services, and the the licensing is basically prohibitive um, at this stage to incorporate Google. So it's a licensing issue. Yes. Okay. I mean, obviously, that's where they make the revenue from, and um, they put a lot of restrictions on how many calls you can make, and uh, lots and lots of things. So, if um, uh, let me uh, let me rephrase my sentence, um, the, the between mm -hmm. the Open Street stuff and and Bing, then I'm not. Um, yeah, you you need to look no further. Okay. Um, are you looking into adding a quick search to the nav bar control? I love to see an example of what you're trying to achieve. Uh, unless one of the support guys want to jump in with an answer. And which which, which platform too, please? Uh, so, I, and I could be butchering your name. Is it, I think it's Jaco. So, Jaco, which platform are you looking at? Uh, support is saying yes. Paul, yes. <laughs> um, maybe Jaco can send you an email. Here, I'll shoot it to him. That'd be great. My, uh, my contact details, I'll just pop up on screen for a second. So, while we go through this. Um, as I said before, while Amanda just trolls the, the rest of the question log there, we love to hear from you guys, whether it's you know simple how to do thing questions or um, you know feature requests or anything else. The support center is the number one place to go, and I know that all the support staff work tirelessly to uh, to bring solutions. The number of sample projects that get put up there to help people. Um, I know that I say from on behalf of Mahul and Seth, um, we love to hear from you directly. Send us an email, and I. You know, within the APAC region, I've helped a, a quite a number of developers get over, um, whether it be knowledge base hurdles or best practices and how to implement things. Um, it, we just love to see how the controls are used in the real world. Uh, Jaco says the platform is WinForms for that quick okay. search to the nav bar. So, yes. Hi. Are there any plans of implementing the vertical grid for WPF? Great question. Um, that one I'll have to definitely <laughs> delegate on. When it when it comes to some of the decisions, Julian is normally um, um, is normally on these calls and he's great at answering questions like that. So we're going to defer that one to Julian when he's available and get yeah, an answer certainly. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, <laughs> from Adam, for Paul, Adam might be our 1% from Australia. <laughs> when can we expect a meetup of the Sydney Dev Express user group? Great question. I'm happy to answer that one. Um, with, with launch and, um, and other things, we've got the Second Brisbane uh, Dev Express user group happening on the 9th of December, and in January we are setting up a monthly meeting for all our um, users and clients in Sydney and also one in Melbourne. So there will be one every month in 2014. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. And uh, uh, good morning, Adam. Thankfully, you're an hour ahead of me, so it's already 6 a.m. for you. Oh, that's nothing. <laughs> hmm. um, does the WPF property grid have the read-only property? Support guys? Yes. Yes. Answer on the vertical grid. Um, it, it's something that is certainly in the plans, but it hasn't been scheduled as of yet. Now, I've also been asked to remind everybody that next week we have our annual summit, which is basically where all the brainiacs in the company get together and thrash out the technical roadmap for the next 12 months. Um, so 
you know, that's where all those suggestions and things all get um, discussed and the, the, you know, the, the, the future roadmap for 14.1, 14.2 is then looked at. So um, certainly if you watch this space, I think around about January, maybe end of December, January, um, Julian will be posting, well maybe January, maybe later, but Julian will be posting the roadmap for um, our plans for next year. So it's all, all very exciting and December is a huge month for us here. Does the dashboard, this might be a question for Seth tomorrow, Mohammed, but does the dashboard su support live data? I think that should be a come and see tomorrow. <laughs> come back and see us tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, I think I think that might be about it. Let's see. We'll do this one last one from Austin. With the WinForms version of the spreadsheet, is there a way to access the underlying API to be able to directly read and write to Excel spreadsheets? Absolutely. You, you can use the straight API or the, the spreadsheet document library without any visual aspect whatsoever. Um, Seth did a couple of posts on that on his blog uh, when, it was, when it was released. I think um, even um, Azret did one as well. So it is a really nice library for simple things like data import and export for applications. It's so easy just to read a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet, manipulate the data, dump it back out without the user even knowing that you're running a spreadsheet control on it. Cool. So, any other questions or, or um, things? Support at devexpress.com. Email me directly, and we certainly look forward to sharing for the rest of the week some other cool stuff that's happening in 13.2. Yes, thank you, Paul, for that segue. So, like we've mentioned a million times, this whole week is 13.2 launch week. Uh, we have four more webinars this week, and you can register for all of them at devexpress.com slash webinars. We're covering uh, all platforms. Analytics and dashboards is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, hosted by Seth Juarez. Um, then we have ASP.NET on Wednesday and Code Rush on Wednesday as well. We have a 10 a.m. for ASP.NET and a 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Code Rush. And then What's New XAF is Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So again, you can register for all of those at devexpress.com slash webinars. Um, great questions, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks to Paul for presenting. Again, uh, I just want to remind you, when you exit this webinar, you will see a short survey. Just please take a second to comment. Um, your feedback is really appreciated. All right, everybody, that's it. Thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.